Hi guys, welcome to As Simple As Possible. In this video, we are going to discuss two types of measures of calculating and comparing performance of entities. That is return on capital employed and EBITDA. We have heard a lot about all these these two terms, but I thought I'll make a video on it to help us better understand and get a picture view so that we can keep it intact in our brain. So whenever someone asks us, we know something about these two measures. So. As we know, return on capital employed is equal to, I have taken a generic formula, which is net profit divided by capital employed. So this is a generic formula. This will give us a percentage. EBITDA is earning before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. So, uh, so EBITDA is something like the profit, which is, we have not deducted any kind of interest, depreciation, taxes for now. For this, it will help us to compare the uh, EBITDA of another company and we will be able to understand because all these, uh, why are these being deducted? Interest, depreciation, tax, amortization. It is being deducted because these have certain kinds of subjectivity involved which might uh, hinder us from comparing the performance based on an objective basis. So that is why we have removed these depreciation, amortization and all so that we get to have a clearer picture of the comparison between the two EBITDAs and then we will be able to know which one is performing better. So return on capital employed, we will take this as the first measure that we will discuss. So return on capital employed, as we know, it is giving us a percentage figure. So obviously it makes it easier to compare. Second, it is calculated from the already published data. We just take up the numbers which is are there in the financial statements and then we just put it in the ratio. So it is easy to calculate. Third, it can be distorted because uh, there may be different kinds of intangible assets. So intangible assets, what do they affect in this ratio? Simply they affect the capital employed. They also might be affecting the net profit because it is done after calculating all the goodwill amortization. It will remove all that. So in that case, it is affecting the ratio somehow. Next, it is that it is may in, it may encourage managers to not invest in non-current assets. That is for sure because the if the non-current assets it is increasing, the capital employed is increasing. The ratio is overall decreasing of return on capital employed. So why will a manager or uh, the management want to reduce its return on capital employed? On which basis it might get investment from the investors? So obviously they will not try to invest more in non-current assets, but not investing in non-current assets will reduce our future earnings because capitalizing capitalization of assets is very important for an entity to you know grow because machines, uh, buildings, all these they add up to a company's growing capacity and earning capacity. When we discuss about EBITDA. As we know, it is earning before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. Amortization is a depreciation of uh, intangible assets. So it is also a kind of a depreciation. Tax we are reducing, uh, we are not reducing. Interest we are not reducing. We are also not reducing depreciation and amortization. So uh, obviously it is very easy to calculate because it is coming from the published data. Second, it removes the element of subjectivity because non-current assets we are we are not assuming any kind of uh, lives so, so dividing it by 10 and then uh, you know if i am dividing my asset by 10 and uh, of a one lakh asset and i am charging a depreciation of 10000 and however the another entity it is calculating the depreciation dividing the lives uh, of that depreciation of that asset by maybe 15 so it is uh, it is calculating lesser depreciation so that is not there subjectivity is not there of determining the uh, the life of non-current assets. So this is one example that, so overall this ratio, this, uh, this measure, it removes the subjectivity we can say in some ways. Next, depreciation, amortization, we are not reducing it because it might be relating to previous years. So it doesn't make sense that we, you know, reduce that from the initial number. So this will give us a better measure. Then loans may be at the artificially reduced rates of interest might be. So that that will also involve some kind of a subjectivity or might be a distortion of facts. So it is better that we are removing, we are not calculating the interest. We are not removing that interest part. So we are getting the true figure. 
so this is an absolute measure as we know so it makes it bit difficult to compare businesses of different sizes so this was all about these two measures i hope you like the video please do comment share and subscribe to the channel and of course thanks for watching